my name is Trish, uh, Nenok123, and you are watching MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 183. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Kyle. Hey gang, how you all doing? Fine, fine. How are you doing, man? I'm pretty good. I just had a tub of Ben and Jerry's ice cream, so I'm doing very well right now. What? Ben and Jerry's... Have you not heard of Ben and Jerry's ice cream? Yes, I heard. You had a... What? You, you, do a you tub. Know, do you know how jealous, jealous I am right now? Like, ah. Uh, I can hardly tell, because I'm not sure whether it's jealous or confusion that you're conveying right now. Like, I... Uh, I, want, <laughs> I, want, I want ice cream. Uh, never, never mind. Composure, keep. Cap, yes, whatever. Uh, our guest for this week is... Well, guess why don't you introduce yourself to the people who... Well, to the people. Hello, my name is Trish. Uh, I go online by Nanok123 on DeviantArt, uh, Nanok1234 on Twitter. What is it that you do? I invite you here for a reason, right? So what is it that you do? Well, I do uh, a lot of pony art. Uh, I, I like to draw in general. Um, I do art direction and art for BronyCon, as well as um, the... Uh, I do artwork for Dusty Cat. Um, I've done, I, I do artwork for a lot of different folk. <laughs> um, I did, I recently just did a card, a little piece of art for Peter New, which was awesome. And he gave that away at, at Burning Cam, which was cool. So yeah, I'm, right now I'm unemployed, you know, so my actual job is drawing right now. So you're an artist for the fandom, you draw the arts. I do the arts, yes. So I've seen your art before, like when scrolling through your galleries and just looking at your art, it's like, wow, this art is amazing. I've seen this one before. Like, huh, where have I seen this? Hey, is that the BronyCon poster? Hmm, I wonder. I have been around online for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of jump from fandom to fandom as my interests kind of grow and, and, um, I'm inspired by a lot of different things, but yeah, as, as far as like doing art for the fandom, I've been doing art for this, for BronyCon since 2013, and, uh, this will be my fourth year with them. And it's just grown like insanely crazy. Um, we start, we started work for 2016, like two weeks ago. Ooh. So we're already working for next year. It's going to be huge. As far as I'm aware, it's our, fifth year so we're planning to do things pretty big i can't really talk about any details but um it's going to be amazing well i've seen your art around and i'm sure BronyCon is going to enjoy the art and so will the attendees but i think we skip a few lines before we proceed and that is who's your favorite character ah uh, uh, my favorite character See, I bounce between so many because I like them all so much, but Applejack, I relate to the most. And if you look at my OC, her tail is kind of pretty much like Applejack's tail, except without the little ponytail bit at the end. So she's just got, you know, that big poofy tail. Um, but anyway, I like Applejack. She's, you know, really good quality character. And I tend to lean toward bad guy characters too. Any good story needs a nice antagonist. You have to have a good bad guy. So like Starlight Glimmer, she's like my new favorite bad guy. I like the Maniac. Mm, the Maniac's the Maniac's just awesome in terms of oh, wow, that's a bad guy you won't see ever again. It's okay though because she was so absurd. I know. And the she was meant to be like this big comic book villain, and so you know they had to go big. Hmm. True. True. What do you think about Tarek? I like the G one version of Tarek better because he was. Scarier. <laughs> I feel oh. like this one, I, I, because I knew his voice as that dog from Pound Puppies, and I'm like, oh god, all I could see was the dog from Pound Pu Puppies. Oh wow. I'm like, all I could see was the big sheep dog from, uh, from Pound Puppies, and then I couldn't Wait, take him seriously. Sheep dog, isn't that the voice for Bender also? Yeah, I think so. So, uh, what was it, DiMaggio something? Yeah. Wow, he's a, he, he's really good. Yeah, he's also Jake the dog, and huh, well, yeah. So he's a lot of different voices, I guess. 
But, uh, but as, as T-Rex, all I could see was that big sheep dog <laughs> from Pound Puppies. And I was like, oh, man, why? Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> well that, that's just immersion shattering. Yeah. Well, like any villain you can kill with a rainbow, it's just, you know, mm. I'm like, uh, my bad guys need to be made of sterner stuff. True that, true that. He was taken out by the power of friendship. Yeah, power of true friendship. Yay, there's Yay. Ex Machina tree power. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what's your favorite episode? I'd have to say uh, the Power Ponies episode was my favorite. Oh, really? Oh. Uh, yep. And I met Charlotte Fullerton, the writer of uh, the Power Pony episode at BronyCon this past year. That was really cool. Um, But, yeah, I like superheroes. So, the Power Pony episode was really fun. Yeah, I do like superheroes too, and that episode was just amazing. Like, trying to figure out, okay, who's this character? Like, Rainbow Dash is the Thor? Like, hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. That's just, hmm. Yep, Um, and and Mistress Marvelous was like Miss Marvel. And I was like, ah, that's such a big hit. (laughs) Yeah, but, and also they did the lasso, so she's Wonder Woman at the same time too. Mm -hmm. Mm Hmm. And Pinkie Pie's just the Flash. Or Quicksilver? Yeah. So, yeah, speedy characters are all over the place. That's just fun. They could have expanded on that. You know, they could they could do another episode or a comic book series, which they did. Mm-hmm. They did do uh, they did do a comic book of Power Ponies, which was cool. Um, and I, of course, have that. Hello. Uh, same here. That was an interesting comic, too. It was like, hmm, this was the comic version of the Equestria Sorry, the power ponies thing. Like, oh, I'm just confused right now. And then the ending with Rainbow Dash, like what? Yeah, and well, I think there's another kind of comic where, like, the maniac would does she like escape or something, and she ends up in meeting the the uh, Equestria Girl yeah. version. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this is gonna be weird. And then they never did anything else with it. Yeah. So I was like, like oh, um, uh, but. Yeah, it's just so much. What? Yes. Without good bad guys, you have no story. So you have to have, I That's why I like bad guy characters. Like Scar from The Lion King's my all-time favorite bad guy ever. He's mm-hmm. the best. Uh, you know, he he was just sinister. He was just evil. Oh, yeah. And, and it was just, it was fantastic to see how the characters overcame the obstacles that he threw at them. Um, so... That's that's why I like bad guys. Without any good bad guy, you have no story. Mm, true, true. Like, the bad guys make the story. Like, if you watch anime and you watch Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Stardust Crusader, Dio is just amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, oh, he is just... Mm, everybody's scared of him, and for good reason, too. So, to the third question, um, how did you become a fan of the show? I've been a fan of Pony since way back. Since uh, G1. So I kind of lost track of Pony after, like, G1 and G2. So, like, G3 comes, and I'm like, what is this? I can't watch it. <laughs> and so I didn't. And then G4 was coming, and I said, well, I'll give it a peek. And I watched one episode, and I was hooked on it. And the the animation style, the character qualities, not so much the songs at first, but they kind of grow on you. And then I found out who who brought those back to life, and it was Lauren Faust who also did, um, what do you call that? Um, um Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. That, and- um, she was also animating, she animated Sawyer and Cats Don't Dance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that one was a classic. Right? And so I was like, oh, no, I, I gotta watch some more of this. <clears throat> and so I watched it. I kept watching it and I was just hooked on it some more and it just brought me back. Nostalgia feels. Mm. So I had, I had feelings, and so I had to, you know, keep watching forever. And so I've been watching for years, <laughs> all the years. Oh yeah, ponies, ponies is just fun. Like Lauren stopped working on it after season, well, midway season two, and well, that's a shame. But the later episodes were still fun. Still not her vision, but it was still fun. Right. Everybody's going to have their least favorite episodes. Mm-hmm. And I'm not as huge a Fluttershy fan as a lot of people are. <laughs> All right. Um, and so I find that, you know, 
between her and like I'm I'm I like Pinkie Pie, but sometimes she's just like so much I just can't handle it. And I tend to not watch those episodes as as closely as I would others. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean because sometimes Pinkie Pie or the other characters they they grind on you a bit too much and you can't stand their characteristic in that episode and you just kind of turn it off. You you turn off your brain and just watch for the characters that you like. Oh, Applejack's doing something cute. Oh, Rainbow Dash is doing something cute. So you... The reasons I like like Pinkie Pie, the reasons I like Pinkie Pie, they push her expressions more. Mm-hmm. Like, the animators would push her expression more. Um, the reasons that I am okay with Fluttershy is, you know, she has a different... She has different mannerisms than the others. Not... It's not, it has nothing to do with Fluttershy's character. And I, I there's nothing wrong with being a Fluttershy. Mm-hmm. But like, Dragon Shy was just on the other day. And I swear that is my least favorite episode. Like, Fluttershy was being, you know. Scared. Scared. The entire episode. She was like the cowardly lion. Now mm-hmm. they don't have her being so much scared as being afraid to be assertive. <laughs> well, um, she's improving slowly. Yeah. Right. And I guess that as we all evolve as people, we all evolve slowly too. So, I mean, can't really hold it against them too much. But that episode, for me, that was my least favorite Fluttershy episode. And everybody loves her. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, everybody. <laughs> well, everybody, including me. Well, okay. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I, I've learned to come to terms with it. I like I like everybody's favorite background pony, Applejack. <laughs> Hey, I thought everybody's favorite breakdown pony was Derpy. <laughs> I, I, well, I've only seen the running joke. Well, of course everybody loves Derpy. Oh, She's true. so cute. Oh, true, I love true. Derpy. Um, so, final question is, what do your family and friends think about your love for Sid show? Everybody's really supportive. You know, they kind of don't care because they know I like animation in general. So it's not like they are like, oh, you like that horse show. You know, <laughs> what's wrong with you? It's... You know, obviously, I'm not, like, obsessive about it. Of course, though, if you saw my desk, you'd be like, yes, you are. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, see see your desk, see your whatever it is, dresser. Little trinkets everywhere and uh figures and toys and plush things and you name it. It's everywhere. Mm-hmm. And especially when you draw it so much, people just expect that of you. They assume it's just, like, another, like, a hobby for me. Because I, I, again, I hop so much from, from you know, fandom to fandom. thing to thing. Yeah. Mm. From fandom to fandom. Or I cross. <laughs> like, I do a lot of fandom crosses. Oh. Um, my uh, Serenity uh, or Firefly pony piece is a popular one. I did uh, Gem and the Holograms mixed with uh, the main six. And that's a really popular one. <laughs> uh, talking about that one. I, I need to stop you there. Like, talking about that one. Um, did you know that that shirt, like that that piece that you made into a shirt, like that was just so awesome when it popped up on EQD and TV Public um posted it out and sold it. Oh yeah, it's actually in my it's in my T Public store, so I get like I get like a couple of bucks for every shirt that that sells, which is nice. You're welcome. Yes, I just bought one myself. I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, I should buy one of these. I, I, I got one hanging. Like, I, if I can turn on the webcam, I'll show you. Like, that was just awesome. I am so glad. Thank you for buying one. The the posters, I have posters too, which I, I got to get up on my website at some point. But they went really well. And it, it shows the amount of work that you would put into that one, say, versus the ones that aren't as shaded. There's a, at least 40 hours worth of work within that image people don't understand that sometimes when you tell them hey i just drew this this nice piece and you know they want to buy a copy of it for like five bucks and they get you know or they get nasty with you over a price well i've got 40 hours worth of work into it you know it's so what was it original or printed prints Prints. um everything's all digital Mm. so i have um and the posters were really nice quality they were like 12 by 18 nice thick paper you know, so I was only selling them at at, at BronyCon for five bucks a print, hey, which that's, really that's cool. un, right, that's unheard of. And you know, a lot of people were wrinkling their nose up at it. 
You know, really? they didn't want to pay. And then some folks were like walking up to it and taking a picture of it and walking away. And I'm oh, like, what are you doing? I, oh my God. Oh, I remember that Tumblr post about that. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, I'm like, oh man. But, you know, I, you can't, I don't know. I try to be as easy as I can with folk because you didn't, they don't know. Mm. They don't know how it hurts artists to do that. Oh yeah, I know, I know. It, the, the, see, the other thing too is like when, when you create something, like you spend the, well, for you, you said the 40 hours on creating that mm-hmm. gem pony, like that, I got it on, as a shirt. And when I look at the picture online, it was like, oh, this is awesome. I, I, it's just a few bucks, but oh man, like the postage is just going to cost me another shirt. So, mm, how do I do this? How do I do this? But you know, I just took the dive and bought it because I just love the art and I just love the reference. It's just, it's just like crazy. Well, thank you very much. That actually, the idea came from, uh, my pal Makuru, who's also on, uh, BronyCon staff. He, uh, I was kind of like, what should I draw? And he goes, uh, gem and ponies. <laughs> and so I kind of did the whole thing. And then I had more ideas of other characters I could fit in there. So there, there will be a sequel uh. to it. Um, because since, since of course Twilight Sparkle, is gem. Mm, so you need the misfits. Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have the misfits. I have the misfits as uh, Adagio and the Dazzlings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also have Rio as Flash Century. <laughs> like my brain just exploded because his hair is purple and and Rio's hair is purple, and I was like, this is perfect. Uh, the fandom will kill you. Yes, they will. <laughs> and it's cool. Uh, I, I've I've had a good run. <laughs> It's all right. I like it. <laughs> well, the only way they could possibly kill you any faster is if they ha- if you had a bedroom that was themed My Little Pony as well, just to complete the set. Because you mentioned right. your desk. If it was the whole lot, then it would be kind of like a My Little Pony dream of some sort. Just like, oh, look at all the ponies. Look at all the look ponies. At- I must now kill you. <laughs> That's right. Uh, because that is, the, that is the friendship is magic way. Wait, killing people? I don't think so. <laughs> well... But no, like uh, a kid, like I, I think the parents are the awesomest parents ever because they spent the time and money to create a derpy team room. Oh yeah, I saw that. It was their kid must be so happy. Yeah. Because I mean, not many parents would do that. Yeah, like spending that cash, like just like if you look at the curtains, they're derpy related, and the sheets, like they're like gray and stuff, and. If I understand right, um, kids these days, they like the bright colors, the neon pink, the neon blues and whatnot. But gray, that's just unheard of. Everybody loves that muffin mare. True. And uh, this kid in particular, although I might have gone with yellow for the wall since, you know, like the main color mm. yellow. It's so good of the parents to indulge their child like that. Yeah, but still, it's really good looking and that poster on the wall they did for her like i don't know could that be a what you call this interplay poster because it looks like it yeah that looks like an interplay thing or some sort of official yeah it looks official Mm. because it's got the logo down in the corner you know what they they should have put your poster up (laughs) i know right could the gem pony just be like right there right above the bed I would have gotten a derpy poster if you were going to do all oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Still, it looks good. I have to, I have to do a derpy gem, or a derpy uh, 80s. Oh. Derpy. I wonder what what's the like team's gem. going to be. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. But uh, I'll add it to my list of things that I need to do. Oh, yeah, cool, cool. Here first, and probably on your DeviantArt later on. Yep. So, we've been talking a lot about your DeviantArt and art, so... What got you inspired into drawing in the first place? I'm inspired by a lot of things. So, like, classic animation was the hook. Um, Don Bluth, classic Disney. I mean, ask Richard. That whole beginning part of Children of the Night was so Don Bluth, it wasn't even <laughs> funny. Like, the, the candle, the way it was lit, and the, you know, writing in the oh, book. Yeah. That's kind of very Secret of Nim kind of, like, if you look at the Secret of Nim and you look at that intro... That's all very inspired. Um, and of course, you know, Jordana and I, we love the classics. 
So, you know, and, and we talk all the time about character design and things like that. So, um, we were both very inspired by Don Bluth, uh, Chuck Jones, the old classic cartoonists from, uh, Warner Brothers days. I'm a fan of everything animated, like most old classic animation. Today's newer animation, it's gotta really have a nice story to hook me in. Cause like, you know, I'm kind of like one of those folks who's, I like the newer animation, not like television animation. Cause I still don't understand shows like Gumball. Oh, that and, one, those, mm. You know, I, I mean, I like Gumball. The, the characters are cute and everything, but I don't understand yeah. like how random it is at times. But if you think about it, right? Like what's the difference between random shows from our past to the modern ones? Like if you look at Johnny Bravo, if you just look at, um, let's just say Rocco's Modern Life, they're random too. So what makes them different from the old and the new? They were hand drawn. Oh, true that. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing like these newer ones are more like Flash or Harmony or things like that, and and it, they're all very stylized. But the new style just kind of seems lazy to me. Like how everything's very straight, and you don't see a lot of curves unless they're exaggerating the way arms wave. That's just my opinion. Other people's mileage may vary, but I'm just I I'm a purist, traditionalist. It's got to have volume and shape. It, it can't just be straight lines. I am a fan of curves. <laughs> All the way up through like Aladdin and, and The Little Mermaid and things like that. So like anything that's kind of got like a zanier feel, like something that's not so polished. Like the new Pixar stuff makes me sad because it's also polished and perfect. Well, they're using 3D Ugh. computer graphics, so that's that. I know, but it's progression and evolution, obviously, in animation. But I prefer a hand-drawn image. I can understand. You you want the feel of the old. Let's just say something random, something not as good, like Heathcliff. You remember that? Yes. I actually have some animation cells from Heathcliff. Wow. Still, like the cartoon in terms of story was, yeah. But right. the art was not bad. No. Um and it was, again, it's all in writing and, and the whole piece has to kind of come together. Mm. Um, I don't know if you remember, like there was an old public service announcement and the mascot was Captain O.G. Readmore. He was a cat that wore a sailor suit and he was drawn by, darn it, what was that animation guy's name? Uh, looks like um, Don, Don Bluth, no? Oh no, it looks like Bluth, but it was, um, curses. I can't remember. Uh, let's see. Uh, I am on the wiki page for this, and I am very bad at trying to... Starring Vincent Price. <laughs> what? Oh, Rick Reiner. Rick Reiner. If you look at a lot of Rick Reiner's stuff, he did a lot of, like... He did a... I think it was kind of a religious cartoon called um, uh, uh, Kingdom Chums. And if you look at them versus this, the styles are really great. But um, the Captain OG Read More stuff was made to get kids to read, mm. read books. This was like Adventures in Books. It was a PSA. It, it, it had a message. That kind of animation to me is better than seeing toys with feelings <laughs> or, you know, feelings with feelings. All right, all right. I mean, I, I do understand. Some, sometimes you want, well, you have art. Art is good, but you want something, you want a message behind the art. Yes. So, yeah. But his style was so great. His backgrounds are so rich. Oh, I'm just, mm. I love old cartoons. They look good. They look good. Like, like I mentioned before, I thought it was Don Bloom. So, mm. The original, um, tunes, I think, were animated by, like, Amblin. I want to say they were Amblin animation, the same people who did, like, Tiny Toons and oh, wow. things like that back in the day. But this was prior to, I think, Tiny Toons. I think this was more like, or maybe it was coinciding. It was like right around the same time. It's like late, late eighties, early nineties stuff. But I have a whole ton of cells from that. And that's the thing that I do collect animation cells as mm. long as I can, you know, afford, afford them. It, yeah. <laughs> Cause some of them can get quite pricey. I know what you mean. I was at the convention once and Andy Price was there and he kind of sold his original piece for the comic panels. And mm. some of them were at $100 Singapore. And some were, some of them reached up to 500. Like, oh wow, if I only had the cash. 
That's right. And you don't want to be that guy who walks up and says, you know, if I had the money, you know, I'm always like in awe of original stuff because his original comic pages, I swear, Andy Price is like, Amazing. you know, yeah, I know. he is. I, I've had the, the opportunity to meet him several times and oh, wow. he's a very nice gentleman and I've gotten a couple of pieces of artwork from him. One was of my OC and then one was of Celestia wearing sunglasses, which oh, was fun. Nice. Like I, I met him once in my lifetime and that was one week after BuckCon and whew, traveling again, that was something. But just getting to meet him, just getting to sit down and talk to him, that was just amazing. Yes, he was fantastic. Yeah. And in he's got a lot of influence uh and style. Like I love his Batman pieces mm. and his uh his you know, he does a lot you said Vincent Price earlier mm-hmm. and he's got a lot of uh horror movie something like yes, that. Yes, horror yeah. movie horror movie references. Um things like that within his artwork, which is fantastic. Him and his car um, comic book heroes, they're pretty not bad. And this work, like, he does a lot of those cartoon heroes things, and it was pretty awesome. And I, I think what hooked me was the way he just draws things, like, especially when it comes to the way he does the human characters or the pony characters. He can just do it. His expressions are so fun. Mm. Like, his pony expressions are so fun. Like... I didn't like Luna's mane. Like, I still don't like it, like, as it's animated because it's very difficult to kind of, I guess, animate that shape. Mm -hmm. Um, Richard can attest to how hard it was to, to animate her mane for Children of the Night. And, um, he makes it look more like an actual mane, like hair, Mm -hmm. which I think is fantastic. Um, it makes it look less like a huge blob. And more like an actual main. And he created a little, a little pet character for her, that t- uh, Tiberius the yeah, possum. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, he's so, like, and watching the expressions he gives Luna makes me love Luna even more. Oh yeah, like, the way he just draws Luna, and especially Chrysalis, like, he loves to draw Chrysalis and Rarity, if I do remember right. Yes, Rarity. And Applejack is his favorite. I think, because I I remember giving him a drawing of Applejack from way back. (laughs) And uh, I think he said Applejack's his favorite pony. From what I heard, he just loves drawing Rarity, like Rarity, Applejack, anything to do with Rarity, Luna, or Kate, not Cadence, um, Chrysalis. Yes. Like, those are his favorite few. I remember going to up to him and uh, commissioning him a sketch, and it was Chrysalis and Fufflepuff. And that drawing is just, mm, just so cool. Uh, he drew, he drew, uh, Gari for me and it's awesome. It's, it's sitting in a plastic sleeve, but it really needs to be in a frame on my wall. <laughs> uh, the frame is going to be expensive. <laughs> yeah, I know. God, I, but I have also got a couple of prints of his. Mm. Uh, one is, uh, Wonder Woman pony. Oh, wow. And, I remember and that one. she's fantastic. And, um, the other one is, uh, I think it was like all the background ponies that were on the cover of one of the comic books. Did you get the cover for the Rarity and Applejack Friends Forever? The sepia tone one? Yeah, the sepia tone one. Yes, it's beautiful. Oh, I know. I, I just had to get it. Like, ah, so awesome. We can sit here and fangirl and boy over, uh, Andy Price all day. Oh yeah, we, we can just sit down and talk about the comics, like, um, <laughs> but back on track, like, you mentioned, um, Richard, and, well, I know Richard, you know Richard, but the audience at home might not know who Richard is. So, Richard is our friend, he's the guy who did Children of the Night, or better known as Lionheart Cartoon, or better known as Duo Cartoonist. So, yes. he is the guy who did that. And, while you're talking about Gary, I've been looking at her and something caught my eye. And I saw, hey, isn't that the pony at the very beginning who was writing the letter? And Yes. Mm. She is my OC. That's Gari. Um, She is also the narrator of The Children of the Night. Um, She's writing the story in the book and talking uh, about and telling the story of of how the sisters uh, split and how uh, Luna wanted to start a new new colony. To have a better life for her people and, uh, or her ponies. 
her subjects. Mm -hmm. It was really cool to get involved in that. Um, they just asked me if they could borrow my OC at, or borrow my character. And because of some of the input that I got from, uh, Jordana, Gary's design changed a little bit to make it fit more in the world. Because if you look at the earlier designs of Gary, um, she had a poofy, like, animal tail. It, it, it had stripes on it. And now she's got the, like, fluffy Applejack tail hmm. without the, uh, without the poof on the end. So, that was like the only change they made to fit her better into the world, which it, it was the best change that they ever could have made. She fits in the world without really, I guess, forcing her way in. And, you know, I don't ask anybody to accept that she's an alicorn or whatever, but people are really good natured and good hearted about it because she is the cookie princess. <laughs> after all. Oh yeah. Like I'm seeing what you were saying about her character design. And this was from 2012 and yeah, the, yes. the lines and whatnot, they're there and it doesn't look bad, but in terms of the world, uh, I got no comment. It, to me, it just looks good. Right. Well, it wouldn't fit. Like if you saw her on the show with that tail, you'd be like, what is this? Mm, Get this out of here. Yeah. It doesn't fit in the, it doesn't fit in the world, but with the changes they made to fit her into children of the night, she looks like she could just be on the show, like walk right out into one of the scenes and it would be perfect. Like today's episode, some people are saying. <laughs> yes, like today's episode. <laughs> but I'm not going to talk about it because I haven't seen it yet. Gary in Tour of the Night, she's just a narrator and that's it, right? Yes. Were you involved in any way with Tour of the Night? Yes, I was. I um kind of gave them feedback along the way. If they wanted me to look at something, I saw the I saw that process from the beginning to the end and it was perfect. You know, when they, when they were first starting to talk about it, we were talking about the Don Blues bit at the beginning and they had asked me if I, if I wanted to design one of the other foals. Oh, yeah. And I, and I did. I designed one. His name is Fly by Night. He's one of the little Colts. Um, he's like navy blue and teal or something. He's really dark blue and teal. He was supposed to be modeled after like the night sky. And I helped them by designing one of the Colts. They borrowed my OC. And I gave them a lot of feedback along the way. Um, and being just involved in that whole process, just watching it from start to finish, watching pieces get animated. It was so fascinating to me, mainly because I hadn't dreamed of, of making an animation like that before. When I first saw the animation, it's like, oh, wow, this is just amazing. Like, oh, wow, a lot of wows. And just doing a bit of research and back checking, I saw who created it and I was like, Wait, isn't this the guy from my childhood where I saw him do a lot of art that I like? Huh, yes. That, <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, it was like, it just turns your whole world on its head. You know, you're, you're thinking about a guy who would, of course, draw Kim Possible stuff. Mm -hmm. And his Kim Possible stuff was really on point. Like, it looked like it could be screen grabs from the show, which was awesome. And I like Kim Possible as a cartoon anyway. It was, you know, that, retro spy stuff and it was great but then you're looking at them developing the story and here what if what if things hadn't gone the way that they did or how did the pony sisters split um you know exactly they just said that you know one likes the day and one likes the night and the other ponies like the daytime more well why why is that they created like a sort of parallel universe where they split because one wanted to create a better life. And though it had to do a lot with the nighttime. The concept for Children of the Night was interesting. If you take it beyond face value, like asking all the tough questions of what really happened in terms of story and blah, 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 blah. But in all actuality, it's just a music video. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, on the surface... Yeah. I mean, but that that music video has 16 or 17 million views 20. on it. Oh, holy moly. See? Yeah. I mean, it's like even better. It, and it just gets better yeah. with with time. And I can't tell you how many times people will, will see a poster of mine at, at BronyCon or they'll see my OC online and they'll be like, oh, that was you. You did it. You know? Like, no, yeah, I'm like, I have. No. Yeah, I just, I just helped. Yeah. It was like shake and bake. I helped. <laughs> uh, like, Rich is a cool guy. Like, me getting to know him from, like, 
just being one of those strangers like, I like your work and I talk to you to, are you going to play a game or not? Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, they also did another cartoon. Mm-hmm. Um, they did one with a newer version of like Fluttershy and Discord, uh, Chip of Discord. And the animation for that one, I, I remember at least giving a little feedback on the design of new Fluttershy. Mm-hmm. And I like that design better than current Fluttershy. But that's because the wings were really unique and different. Speaking of the wings, going back to Children of the Night, he animated those wings by hand. They weren't like just some show like rig that he downloaded and just was like, okay. No, no. No, like went through the trouble of doing a lot of that by hand, which is nuts. <laughs> Everything from Children of the Night is 100% made by him and, and yeah. him and his wife. So yeah, it's like, yes. oh my God, like he, he said that I know Luna inside and out. <laughs> his wife paints the most fantastic backgrounds. Oh. I I think the the castle and the the town square and and the nighttime sky scenes oh. and just all of it the, the the little even the little orphanage watching the stages of the background paintings come together and if you look at the midnight mares project mm-hmm. that we all worked on together I did a lot of the early development work and character design work for that uh on commission mm-hmm. and I suggested that they be brought on board, um, and because I think Richard was without a job at the time. Yeah, if I remember right, that was that. Yes. He helped, and his wife helped, create this world from nothing but a bunch of words. There was just words of how this, this realm would look, and it just it came together. It looks like a masterpiece. I, I do remember the design for the main character of Midnight Mares. Uh, what was it again? Uh, I forgot. The Skull Pony thingy. Oh, uh, uh, darn it. What's her yeah, name? It's been a while. But that character design, yes. when I first saw it, like, wow, this is cool. What the guy wanted was like a Day of the Dead kind mm-hmm. of thing. So, you know, when you think Day of the Dead. Skulls. It's skulls. Yeah, it's like that Spanish holiday. Yes. And they had all kinds of, like... He wanted all kinds of, of designs, and they were supposed to glow in the dark. Like, he had this whole idea for the toy in mind before how it would work in an animation. So, like, we had to make this character work for animation. So, like, this whole skeleton thing became a real pain to try and adapt for animation. Oh, I do remember him saying that tracking the whole thing was a burden, because by that point, he wasn't using Flash anymore. He was starting using Toon Boom, if I remember right. Yes, yeah. Harmony. Harmony, yeah. yes. Um, and I couldn't... There was like a script he had to run or he had to create so that when she moved her leg, the bone structure, as it crossed over and say she turned her hoof... So that, you know, that bone kind of crossed into the main outline of the, of the leg, mm-hmm. that it would change the outline color of the leg to meet the bone color as opposed to stay the leg color. So I was like, holy mackerel, you can like make a computer do that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. well, apparently it was some difficult thing because it was, you know, when I saw the test, I was like, <gasps> this is amazing. Like, are you, you a know? wizard, Harry? Yes, he's a wizard. <laughs> and talking about wizards, like, you, you know, R- uh, Rupert Grint, uh, the guy who played, uh, who's that guy, Harry Potter, um, best friend to Harry? Oh. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, wow. Wes, Wes, Wesley? No. Weasley. Mm, yeah, Weasley. Ron. Yeah, Ron. How could we forget? <laughs> I'm telling you, I am just, off the chain today. Yeah, same here. Like, I, I am not in a good tempo. But yeah, Ron. Ron Weasley, like Rupert Grit. Yeah, apparently he went to a convention in Canada and met up with Tara Strong. And, well, t- they took pictures. And why am I bringing this up? Because um, Rupert wore a Pinkie Pie Portal shirt. Yes, I saw that. I thought that was so cool. He's like a... a- Secret brony, I, I guess. Or not so, so secret. No, I don't think so. Because, okay, the whole generic brony shirt, you know, the text phrase brony with rainbow dash in the front, like you can get that yes. um, hot topic. No, really hot topic. What was it again? Um, a- any shop that you can just go, you can get it. But yes. with this one, like this is something out of Wheel of Fine. 
Oh yeah, so he like probably went specifically and picked that up yeah. or whatever because I I know that we love fine sets up a, a shop at Fan Expo. Oh yeah, so like this yeah. is something specific. Like, well, he's a brony, so yay, that's cool. And and of course, Tara Strong being there. Yeah. <laughs> now now here's the real question: Who do you think is the biggest fanboy over each other? Is it Tara over him or him over Tara? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, Tara, of course, has been around longer, so I would imagine he's the bigger fanboy. Yeah, true. I imagine. But yeah. he did Harry Potter, so that's cool too. But of course, yeah. he did the biggest, like, movie phenomenon. Wow, that is a logical paradox. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, it's like, oh, I like you, you like me, ah! <laughs> yes, that is a, that is a logical paradox for me. <laughs> uh, it's like artists meeting artists. Oh, wow. But uh, yeah, g- going back, <laughs> talking about you with an, as an artist, uh, what tools do you use? Um, for me, anything from your regular old paper and pencils to, uh, I use Photoshop CC. Um, I have a graphics tablet, uh, Wacom Intuos, uh, Intuos Three. Oh. So it's kind of an old tablet. Uh, I don't use the Cintiq. I would love a Cintiq, but that's a lot of money. <laughs> oh, true, true. Like the Cintiq is pretty awesome. If I'm not 100 percent sure, like I used to have a graphite tree, like the Wacom mm-hmm. graphite tree, and that was kind of awesome. It still works, but somehow I wanted something new, so I went for the Intuos uh, small. Yes. And I, yeah. I want to get the medium one. Yeah, go get the medium one. Or, yeah, that's much better because the small was just uh like. Uh, this this doesn't feel fun. <laughs> Isn't it like a four by six? Like it's tiny. It is tiny, but for me, I'm not that heavy of a drawer, so it was perfect for me. But in terms of just accessibility and normal stuff, like oh wow, that's just that was just no no. Like if I were to draw a lot on that, I was just gone with the Cintiq. Well, I have several things. I have a you know a tablet, and I also have a little. Um, it's called a, is it the ThinkPad? Oh, ThinkPad. Like the IBM ThinkPad? Yeah, it's a, it's an, it's an older little computer, but it's been upfitted. My best friend, like, does random things, and out of his awesome kindness, he gave me one of these ThinkPads. Uh, it's a Lenovo ThinkPad, oh, wow. where, you know, the, the screen turns around, and you can draw on it. It has Wacom sensitivity without being a Cintiq price. So he got one of these, I guess, the shell, and he kind of beefed it up a bit and put a, a solid-state drive in it, and it, it it's pretty beefy for a little thing. Um, and it holds up well. It's got nice battery life. It's, it's good for drawing on the go. It's a little heavy, I would I would assume, but, you know, got nice resolution. Um, so I can work on things. I can just sketch and doodle on the go. Um I, if I had been thinking, I should have brought that with me to, um, BronyCon, but I wasn't thinking, of course, because it's such a huge event and I didn't want to have, you know, like a lot of equipment laying around. Uh, I know so what I you was mean. Thinking, I know what you mean. Yeah. I'll use anything to create. When we go to restaurants that have paper on the table, I make everyone kind of get up and rotate as I fill the area that I'm drawing in. So if I fill the whole space, I make everybody get up and move. Wow. So that I can, so that I can draw some more around the table while we wait for our food. It's fantastic. And awkward. <laughs> but mostly fantastic. Uh, awkward. Like, awkward is fun, right? <laughs> I'm just like, guys, I've run out of room. You all have to move. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I bet you just love the whole team of the restaurant with the paper, um, paper tablecloth or whatever they use kind of thing. Oh, yeah, I love those. Uh, there's one around us called Macaroni Grill. They give you crayons, but I, I tend to always have at least a nice pencil in my purse. And I kind of go to town with those. And and their crayons aren't too bad. When I was in Disney World, uh, we went to a place that had paper tablecloths, and I drew the guy, our waiter's name was Dale, so I drew him a picture of Dale, <laughs> uh, yeah. the chipmunk, <laughs> and gave it to him and it was really funny. Um, oh, wow. But yeah, then I wasn't making people get up and move. But now that I'm older, I'm like, get up and move. <laughs> you have the power now. Yay. Yes, I do. Yes, adulthood. <laughs> I make people move so I can draw more cartoon horses on the table. <laughs> or Care Bears or whatever I'm drawing at the time. 
whatever tickles your fancy at that point. That's right. So, That's right. talking about drawing cartoon horses, like, I'm seeing one here that you did for um, Dusty Cat. So, was it oh, yeah. a commission or...? Um, most of his stuff that I do for him is on commission. Um, which one, which image is it? Like, I'm looking... Is he dressed like a commander? No, for now I'm just looking at the newest one. Like, him and Screwball on a motorcycle. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was, um, that was a commission. Um, for his, uh, Stay Brony My Friends show. Um, I don't know if he used it on a t-shirt. I want to say he did. Hmm. I want to say... He he, it was a t-shirt design, um, or whatever he was using it for. Um, but I, I do a lot of work for him. Uh, it's fantastic to be commissioned by, by people who are a little higher up in the fandom than you. Uh, um, I know the feeling. He, I'm just like, Ooh, you're reaching, you're reaching back and helping me. That's so fantastic. You know, um, I, I did, I did a couple of designs for him. The, a, a logo that he still uses actually for his, it's either for his intros or for his load-in screens or something like that. Of uh, it's like a headshot of him and Screwy um, holding cider mugs or something. I think he still um, uses that one for almost everything he do he does. Yes, and I'm working on another one for him. Ooh. It's secret though for oh, now, yeah. until he reveals it. But I am working on another one for him right now. It's it's a graphic for something. Mm. I'm not allowed to talk about it. So it's just stuff from you for the future, <laughs> yeah. like that. Yes. Derpy and that. Yeah. I, flash. Century gem team poster yes. oh, art. Exactly. These are all things that I have in my in my queue. Well, the thing for him actually almost mm. done. I still have to do base colors on on a couple of things and then get some shading and and do my colored lines. But you know, as I as I progress through the piece, it should be done mm. by the weekend, I believe. All right. Um, and he'll he'll of course be the one to unveil it. Yay. Um, and then. Once he finally unveils it, then I'll post it up because that's the way it is for, for things like things for BronyCon. They don't go, I don't post them up until they go live. So like if they have a guest announcement, I can't post it until they post it. That's the agreement that we have. If there's a special thing that we've made for say a special item that's going to be at the convention, then I can't post it till they've made mm. it live. So. Uh, it keeps a surprise. Mm-hmm. Surprises are good. True that, true that, as per usual. But the outrageous one I'm seeing here, like the gem pony uh, crossover. So I only see, well, the star lead, Twilight. So how was that like? That was my first one done in that candy style where it's kind of like super shaded. I haven't done that in years. Like back in the day, I used to mess around with like highlights and shading and, and and, you know, different layer things, properties in Photoshop. And this is kind of like so saturated in places and, and so bright. It plays on my love for bright colors, which, of course, hello, rainbow horses. <laughs> I'm, I'm all about these rainbow horses for some reason. You know, I love I love a lot of bright colors, things that pop, shine. And, uh, you know, Gem and the Holograms was all glam and awesome. Oh, yeah. And... If you look at Jem and you notice the earrings yeah, yeah. that she wears, they are Twilight's cutie mark. Hello. I'm like, this is perfect. It has to happen. And and so I kind of just ran with it. You know. I ran with it. I dove in and I was like, I can make this happen. But it um I have my deviant art isn't as updated as it should be. The final pieces for these have all been posted on my Twitter account and I believe on my Tumblr account. Mm. My Tumblr account is animatedvisions.com or animatedvisions and um my website is animatedvisions.com. Uh if you go to animatedvisions, I believe I put the I believe I put it up there. The finish. Now watch. I'm going to get there and it's not going to be there and I'm going to be like, "Oh, you mean for the finished product <laughs> then, like the whole thing?" Yes. Uh, yes, the finished No, nope, it's not there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not there. I am such a terrible person when it comes to updating my own website. It's horrifying. <laughs> Some of my BronyCon work from last year is there, mm. at least. Oh. I must not have been finished it yet. It's still cool. Like, I'm looking at the shirt right now, and the colors, like, wow. When I first unpacked it and just take a look, see, like, wow, this is way different from what I expected. Because on the website, the colors were just, well, I would say flat, but they were kind of 
saturated in terms of the red were not really red kind of thing. But when I got the shirt, like they were popping out like, ooh. What color did you get it on? Did you get it on black or did you get it on like a brighter color? I got it on, what was it, charcoal black something like that? Ah, okay. I just picked it up on um on the blue heather. So when it gets here, I can't wait to see how the colors look. My firefly piece, which I got on a brown t-shirt, is amazing. And the quality from Tee Public is is really well. It's really good. It holds up really well. I've I've had that shirt for a few months now and it's not faded. Mm. It didn't it didn't like the the print didn't wear away in any place. So it it's holding up really well. And the colors from that whole design I tried to make as bright and vivid as possible. Oh, yeah. I post a lot of my progress along the way in that whole thing on Twitter. So if you go on my Twitter account, which is Nanook1234, you go through the uh pictures that I have. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's like a thousand pictures, but if you go back through a lot of them, it'll have progress along the way of each step. Like it was like, okay, so here's the sketch. Here's my refined version. Here's my inks. Here's my base colors. Here's the shading. Um, and I worked at such a high resolution. Like I thought my computer was going to catch on fire by the, by the end of it. The resolution was so high and it was so like deep and rich. I tried to just go as bright as I could as much as I could while retaining the ability to still be printed on things other than like, cause you know how like you have to do CMYK if you're going to mm-hmm, print things mm-hmm. on like a poster. I just needed to make sure that I was still able to do that and retain some of that brightness cause CMYK kind of feeds. Yeah. It like muddies up the color a little bit. So you have to kind of compensate, which I did and it, it held up really well. And my prints are really nice. Um, I'm very proud of how that particular piece came out because it took like a culmination of about 40 hours between the whole thing. All the characters, all six of them were done individually by themselves and then layered through the background. Uh, and the background was all generated by hand and, and layered to look like this whole like late eighties, yeah. early nineties mishmash of bright colors and palm trees and. <laughs> You know, zebra stripes, you name it. I'm just looking at it right now. It's like, wow, this, like, if I'm not talking to you now, like, if I'm just sitting here by myself and looking at the art, like, wow, this is just awesome. You took a lot of time to put into the work. Like, just looking at the shadings, the lighting, and whatever you did to it, that must have took a lot of time. I have, like, on Twitter, there's, like, a four-page or a four-image like progression through Twilight, I believe. Um, how I went from just the base sketch, which doesn't look anything like what it actually looks like at the end. Um, and then I refined it and then I, I showed like the first layer of shading. There's like 10 layers of shading and like, you know, four layers of highlights and different, uh, layer saturations and, and thicknesses. That first character was like a big learning experience for me as far as that type of coloring and shading. There are, there are artists who can pull that off as if it were nothing. And I marvel at them. People like, I don't know, uh, if you guys have heard of Senchi, she's great. Her art style is fantastic. It's very show style, very candy shaded. I call that candy shading and candy highlighting and it just looks so like such like a piece of candy hmm. like an ornament like i don't know it's it's very fancy and it's beyond what i've done in the past on my own and it's a lot of work and i can i can appreciate why people would go a higher price for a commission like that because a lot of my stuff is more show style and the show style only the most they get in the very cinematic parts is some shading. True that, true you know? that. Well, it's a matter of, well, artists, what's we call it? Artist interpretation or artist, I, I forgot the word, but it depends on the artist, like how far they're willing to push it. Yeah, it was a lot of effort. And for that, though, it paid off dividends. It was an experience for me because I got faster at it as I progressed through each individual character. 
you're taking the step to learn the tempo, like, oh, I should do, how do I do this? Like, after you got the tempo, like, oh, okay, I should do this, do this, do this, do this. And till, I, I don't know which pony you started off first. I think it's Twilight first and then who? You know. Yeah, it was Twilight first. And then I went and did, uh, uh, Rainbow Dash second. Uh, because Rainbow Dash's colors were going to be a chore <laughs> because of how her tail, her tail is and how her mane is. Uh-huh. And, and, uh, so I did that one next. And, um, who did I do after Rainbow Dash? Uh, I did Applejack last. Oh, yeah. Applejack was the last one. Pinkie Pie was after that. And then Rarity and then Fluttershy and then Applejack. Yeah. There you that go. Applejack, like, that Applejack, like, mm. Yeah, Applejack is synergy because they're okay. So if you look at Gem and the Holograms, mm-hmm. there were only four. There were only four members, and then in the later season, there was a fifth member. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was like, well, what can Applejack be? Applejack doesn't fit any of these characters. So uh, I made her as synergy, which is the the powerful uh, hologram generator that makes Gem Gem through the magic of friendship. These guys are all together. True that. True that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they're, and they're all like full character images, uh, individually. So if I needed to use just that Twilight for something, I have her as a full oh, wow. image, you know, or just that Fluttershy or just that Pinkie Pie. They're all about the same size too. Wow. Uh, very high resolution, huge pieces. Now I really need to uh, see the Rainbow Dash because you mentioned about the tail and oh, I yeah. can't see the tail and on the finished picture, like, oof. Oh, I've got her just by herself in my Twitter feed somewhere. I'm gonna, I'll find you the picture and link it to you. All right. Well, you, while you do that, I, I'm seeing something on your Twitter feed, which is, um, the whole design of Gary from Full Hood to Equestria Girl. Ah, uh, yes, that model, the model sheet, that was done by Senchi. Oh. Um, very, uh, show style, very accurate. She has a breezy form, a rainbow power form, her children of the night form uh gem ponies yeah i have to add her gem her glam i have to add her glam uh picture to it and then uh it'll be perfect after that oh really so this wasn't done by you then no um i actually had a three uh three character or three version turnaround of her uh done that i made but it wasn't as detailed as that Mm. I didn't make the crystal version of her, for instance. Uh, I gave Senshi artistic liberty to create that sort of look for her. And the other, and she did the breezy one on her own, which was a, which was a nice surprise. And the, and the rainbow power form. Those were all nice surprises. You know, and the wet main one, that was my idea, <laughs> cause I was like, she doesn't like to get wet. She's, she's based on my cougar, um, on my cougar character. Uh, and cats don't like to get wet, so. True, true. I know Um, all that too well. I have cats. (laughs) Oh, well. Aw. I have a giant Malamute. (laughs) I have a big fluffy dog. Uh Uh-uh. And and she's amazing and wonderful. And, well, she's not so much the inspiration, but she is inspired by an... Her name is inspired by an 80s cartoon. Uh, Her name is Evil Lynn. (laughs) And she's inspired, of course, by the one of the bad guys from He-Man. Oh, wow. Who was actually voiced by, uh, in, in the later series, the person who voices Trixie. Really now? Yes. Yeah. I, wow. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Yeah, cause, Kathleen Barr. Mm. She's so awesome. Oh, wow. These people, mm, they, they're very talented. Very talented. I found the Rainbow Dash finally. Yay. <clears throat> so, talking about Equestria Girls design and whatnot, um, are you excited for the third one? I am. I liked the first one. I loved the second one more than I thought I would. So the third one can only be good. I feel like it's kind of getting a little out of control <laughs> with the, with the vehicles and the, you know, the outfits, the clothing are a little extreme, but that's what they do. Yeah, given the theme, it was kind of logical for them to glam up. Right. I posted the, the picture in the, chat. I don't know if you can see it. All yet. right, give me a second. Mm-hmm. And, oh, wow. Okay, now the... Mm. And the makeup is the makeup is so fun because it's so 80s and glam with the like with the like pink mask and the star on the cheek and, and all that, that 
sort of thing. And her wings, like the pose was my favorite because when I first drew this pose, I was like, I mean, she looks like she is just rocking it. She is just shaking her <laughs> butt. Like, wow. look at me. And, and she was supposed to have a lot of attitude, of course. I do like what you did with the tail covering her knee joints. So mm-hmm. it doesn't really seem like well, you, you know, when you draw ponies, you need to have that joint in the knee around that point where you kind of change it. Oh, I don't know how to describe it, but you know what I mean, right? Yes. When I, when I sketched her at first, it, it kind of just looks like, and all of them kind of have this like anthro look as opposed to, as opposed to just how they normally are where they're on their mm-hmm. hooves. Um, so. I wanted her to look like she was just kind of like getting ready to turn around, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh in the actual original sketch of this, you could see the back the back part of her legs cuz I I would construct that bit before I would put the tail on anyway. The whole thing is in character design is is construction. So, you know, you of course make sure the proportions are right, which the way I normally draw ponies, they have a certain construction and the way that the show draws ponies of course they have a certain proportion um i try to stay within that proportion but at the same time exaggerate it just a hint to get that sort of attitude that i wanted so for her legs the way she's standing like her backside is supposed to be facing the the viewer and she's just kind of turning her torso to the side um a little bit because and I really liked her wings. That's why I was like, I can't, I can't do anything with this pose because I have to keep those wings like that. OMG. <laughs> I understand. And well, like some people might say that, oh, how, why does her hip look broken and stuff like? Oh, she's just supposed to be kind of like, you know, how like ladies will sometimes shift that weight. They'll shift that weight onto the, onto the back leg. Now, if I was thinking right, the leg, the, now where the hip is kind of out, but the where the weight is supposed to be, mm-hmm. her leg should actually be a little teeny bit longer. But you know, in the compilation yeah. piece, you can't yeah, really so see that. Yeah, so that's the thing. Like when you, you when you covered it with Pinkie Pie, like hmm, like people would have a problem. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, oh, that's nice. That's a nice image. Yeah. But you know, now I see all the flaws in it, and that's what happens because you're you're, yeah. you're an artist and you're your own worst enemy. So you just look at the piece and you're just staring at the thing that's wrong. Um, true and I do that a lot, and most artists oh, do that true. to themselves. That's true, that's true. But you know, what, what matters in the end is if the customer slash, um, audience like it or not, because I personally do like it. Yeah, again, what you're trying to achieve is, is the attitude. Mm-hmm. So, and of course, Rainbow Dash has a lot of attitude. So, you know, even with that huge mane and the huge tail, you still have to get the attitude. Mm. Um, so in the 80s, of course, all the hair was big and the clothes were loud and bright and, and, oh, and wow. everything. And it just fit her so well to just have her kind of posed this way. I could go on forever about how how much thought went into every bit of this piece. But, of course, I won't bore you with the details. Oh, no, like, I, I think I'm the one that's bringing it up because that is one of my favorite pieces. Oh, that piece has gotten me a lot of attention this this past year, and I'm very pleased that so many people like it so much. Um, again, it, I put a lot of work into it. Not that I don't put a lot of work into every piece I do, but in particular the shading and the highlighting and, and the posing and, and the specific details of the shows they were trying to emulate I had to pay a lot of attention to those things to pay proper homage to the things that I, that I wanted. And it was an experience and one that I would very much like to repeat with future pieces. Well, I can't wait to see more because like you mentioned, there's the dazzling, no, dazzling, right? Yeah, the dazzling and yes, the dazzling. more. But yes, I, um, I actually po- posted a Dejio at some point. Uh, I need to. Yeah, here she is. I need to double check, but. We've been we've been harping on the gem pony, and you know what? I, I like it, but I think at the same time you had another three more that was out, and I think one pays homage to Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Yeah, that was my BronyCon piece. Uh, it uses the BronyCon mascots with main event trapped inside the phone booth while uh, 
blank canvas and hoof beats are on the top oh. in the famous trademark yeah. excellent pose. Oh. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure was one of my favorite oh, movies. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, that, that was awesome. Like, the the things they, they mentioned, like, oh, if we put things here, it'll be here. Like, there is. Yeah, there's the keys. <laughs> like, mm. We have to remember to go back and get the keys. Oh, yeah. oh here's the keys. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. That show was so, uh, that movie was fantastic. And you know that one spawned a, a series of cartoons too. Oh yeah, too. I was about to mention that too. Like, oh, the cartoons. And also, if I remember right, you had, um, um, who was the villain? Mayor, uh, the hair pony. Oh, maniac. Yeah, maniac. Yes, maniac. I had a maniac piece. Uh, I had a maniac piece. I had Blazing, Blazing Star. Star. Those were my t-shirt pieces. All four of those designs are available on the t-shirts. Um, but I also had, a Ghostbusters piece, which I should actually make into a shirt. I'm not going to lie, but uh I will one day when I can figure out how to make the background fade a little bit more. The background is what's holding me up on that one. So I have that one. I also have a Children of the Night piece uh with Gary. You can just roll through this through my Twitter and just see anything that could be on anything. Uh The Maniac one and the, the Ghostbusters one. The Ghostbusters one... Uh, was also featured in the calendar for uh, the Brony Thank You Fund. It's this September. It's actually this month's piece. And I signed a lot of those at BronyCon, too, which was nice. Oh, I had the a Rainbow Dash piece where she's kind of flying over the world, like with the rainbow behind her, which was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, that one's actually a T-shirt design, oh, too. Oh, that one, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at your T-Public. Um, account or T public, I, I don't know what they call artist page, and I'm looking at what you have, and I think there's a cute one that I would love to get if I can get it, and that's gotta go fast. Oh uh, yeah, gotta go fast. That was actually a commission. Um, somebody commissioned me to draw this, and then they asked if I could put it on a T-shirt, and I was like, oh yeah, well I could put it on T public because the first three days that the shirt's available, it's fourteen dollars. Mm. So it would it would be inexpensive for him to have the shirt too. Um and he got it on a couple of tank tops and I've sold a few of those since then. So a lot of people actually like the gotta go fast uh crossover of tails and scootaloo. Yeah, well scootaloo can fly and this is just like oh I don't know, it's heartwarming yet set at the same time I guess. She's like, I can fly, but I have to use these tails instead of my actual wings. <laughs> Which is strange because now I have three tails. So what is my name now? <laughs> but still, I, I do like uh, this because if I if I have the extra cash, I would kind of get this one. And oh wow, if you really ask me honestly, if I have the if I have a buttload of cash, I'll get the maniac tails, rainbow dash, and another maniac. Like ah. Uh, uh. The maniac shirt is well. The there's two versions. There's like this chibi, like mm-hmm. kind of like small version, and then there's the of course she's popping out of the uh, comic book. out of the comic book, and that one is is really fun. And I've sold a few of those. I haven't sold any of the the chibi one, which is fine. Uh, it's not for everybody. Mm. It was just like kind of like I love the maniac, and you don't see stuff with her oh, on yeah. it. So like I just wanted to put a couple of things out there and and. You know, for people who like the maniac. If they buy it, they buy it. If they don't, then it's for me. That one's for me. If I'm not mistaken, the VA for maniac signed something for you with that art? Oh, yes. Um, my friend, uh, Scooter Tales, mm-hmm. uh, on, on Twitter went up to Brony Can and took my maniac piece with him and had it signed by Ellen Kennedy, who is the voice of the maniac, which is Awesome. I can't travel internationally. I don't have a passport. Mm-hmm. But uh Brony Can was fortunate enough to have her as a guest. And so I I had to. I had to take advantage. Yeah. It's like I'm sorry, I have to oppress you with my with my weird fangirlishness. Well it's still um, it's still awesome. Like uh, like just having Senpai notice you was just awesome. Right. <laughs> and I well I have a rarity piece. That where Rarity is dressed as Georgette from Oliver and Company, and Tabitha Saint Germain made a comment about it and actually wanted a piece of that, wanted a, a copy of that poster for her, and uh, so I, I was like, "Oh my god, that's so awesome!" 
you know, of course I freaked out for like three days afterwards. <laughs> yeah. And, and she signed that piece for me as well. And that was super cool. Yeah, I know. It was um, just like, oh, wow, well, just meeting with some of the VAs in person and just seeing how awesome they can be. That's just, that's just, mm. Oh, speaking of voice actors, we'll segue mm-hmm. into, into this, uh, Kathy Westlock mm. thing, um, where she's hanging out in New York for the Equestria Girls premiere. I designed her OC for her. Oh, really? No. Yes. For BronyCon, she was a, she was a guest for BronyCon. Her and, and, uh, Kelly Sheridan, who does the voice of Starlight Glimmer. Um, both of them didn't have OCs to represent them as, uh, the voices of their characters, uh, for our announcement work. So we reached out to them and were, and I was fortunate enough to be able to design both of their characters. They're both, again, they're on my Twitter feed. Like, I'm just nuts about posting pictures on Twitter. Because it's so much easier than going through DeviantArt's crazy gallery structure. Uh, true. So I, of course, posted it all over, all over Twitter and all over, uh, Facebook and all over everything, social media. And Kathy Westlux is, uh, a pony with dragon wings because she does the voice of Spike. So she's got dragon wings and her cutie mark is a flying kite because she was a free spirit and she likes the outdoors. And Kelly Sheridan's is an earth pony with some, uh, really bright colors because she used to voice <laughs> cheerily, I think, back in the day, or she voiced a few pony characters back in the day. And hers was really bright colored ponies. So her cutie mark is a heart shaped paw print, uh, because she, you know, she had a cat and the cat passed away, Aww. of course. And she loves animals and she loves, uh, supporting animal charities and things like that. So, so she has a heart shaped paw print on her for her kitty mark. And I drew a picture of her kitty cat too, because she was so sweet and both of them were so nice. And so just into it, which was really cool. So did you, um, got in touch with them talking about, um, the design, like, what do you want? Like, what, what do you see? Like, um, well, I treated it like a commission, but I kind of did theirs live, like while they were on. So while Kelly Sheridan was talking to us, I was drawing while she was talking. So I could understand how she feels and how she, you know, what she sounds like and, and how she, how she would like her character. So I would show her like along the way how I was drawing and she would give me some feedback and I would change the things that she wanted. So by the end of the call, she had a full character. And, you know, we had a cutie mark and we had colors and, and everything all put together for her. Uh, really nice and neat by the end of the call. And the same thing was for Kathy. Although I did a lot of Kathy's work ahead of time. And then we just kind of bounced back on, uh, ideas. And then she got to hear my dog barking <laughs> in the background and she made bird noises at my dog, which was fantastic because my dog was freaking out. <laughs> oh, wow. And Kathy was really awesome. Both of them were really awesome. It was, it was a neat experience to have. And that's one of the neat things about working for BronyCon that I've gotten to do in the last three years, getting to meet these guests and, and do things for them that hadn't been a thing before. We had never done that before for anybody. I could just imagine like the whole thing, like we're, what we're doing now, like you interacting with the VAs in terms of drawing and with me interacting with the VAs in terms of asking them a few questions here and there about how they do things and work. Because if you think about it, before this, who would have cared, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like this this convention, and and I mean, comic conventions in general have a lot of voice actors there, but, you know, unless they're doing the voice, no one seems to really pay attention and uh, this fandom in general really puts a lot of emphasis on those voice actors really put draws them out and gives them and and lets them shine as people uh not just as the voices of these characters Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um which i i really like BronyCon for um i mean BronyCon's the only one i've been to because i i can't justify a lot of travel for convention BronyCon's in my hometown so like i live here you know, and it's easy for me to get to. And a lot of our, a lot of our staff is here, which is nice. We work really hard for it. And to see the way the, the, not just the voice actors, but the writers and the, oh, yeah. and the other creators and the other people involved in like the comics, 
they love the fandom so much because of how much it's done for them that they just can't help it. They throw themselves into yeah. it, hook, line, and sinker. I know, because when, like I mentioned before, like especially for Katie, like back in the days when she was doing VA for Ran My One Half, she was just like, well, oh, I'm shampoo, and well, okay, I'm going to conventions. Like nobody really is paying attention, or oh, people are just like, okay, yay, I got a few autographs here and there. Like, okay, that's about it. But now... Like, oh my god, your spike. Oh wow, yay. And then like, oh wow. Oh, you're, you're Coco Pamel. Even more crazy. Yeah, right? Even more crazy. Like, yeah, people are nuts. And one gal on our staff, her name is Karen. She's, she's a huge Kathy fan. And she brought Kathy over to my table <laughs> at the convention, over to my vendor table. And so, of course, I had a crowd <laughs> after, after she left. Like, oh my god, that was so cool. <laughs> oh, and especially for her just to voice Pike of all the characters, like. Oh, she was so nice. It was just the experience that, that not just working for the convention, of course, but doing the things that you do in the fandom. It's just, it's so worth it. Yeah. Like, I, I find it gratifying in terms of, like, I'm just doing this for fun, but in the long term, it's very, I don't know, I mean, like you get to know context, like you get to know people. Oh yeah, it's, it's enriching. It, it both gets you out there, like, it gets your name out there, it gets your, you know, you become a guy who, or a person that they can, uh, reach out to for, for whatever. Like, Peter New reached out to me for his, for his promotional piece for Brownie Can. Out of nowhere. <laughs> it was fantastic. I've never, I was like, <gasps> Oh my god, that's so awesome. You know, I freaked out. Yeah. And he's so nice. And I didn't know he did the voice of Sunil. And, oh, uh, talking you know, about that one, like, I saw that tweet you made, like, you didn't knew and then you <laughs> draw him as Princess Big Mac. Yes, oh. I drew him Princess Big Mac outfit because, you know, he loved it so much. You could tell, right? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> oh wow. But, well, he actually loves that whole thing with the, um, Princess Big Mac thingy until he did with the duckies, Ducky Makuras. Oh, uh, that was just funny. <laughs> yeah, uh, this fandom though. Oh yeah, it's just nuts. out of control with the things that they create for some of these characters, and then the you know to see the voice actors either go along with it or the creators <laughs> or the writers go along with it. Like, oh, Princess Big Mac's a thing now. Let's do this. Uh, you know, and one hundred. <laughs> just look at yeah, it. One hundred. <laughs> Yeah, right. And people's ship sank, oh. and people's ship sailed, and <laughs> it was just, you know, um, you just this fandom brings out a lot yeah. of of things in people, and I just, I don't know, I enjoy it a lot, and I'm glad that it's still here. Mm, true that. So you you were saying about Kathy Westlock being in New York for the premiere of Friendship Games. Uh, yes, uh, it appears by a tweet that she made. She will be in New York. On September 17th, which is what? I guess in five days? Mm -hmm. Which is kind of strange because the premiere for um, the movie is going to be on the 26th, which is two weeks from now? Uh, yeah, I imagine that they're having some sort of a preview in uh, in New York. It's kind of neat. Will you be going? Oh, no. I I just actually went to New York not a week ago, I guess. I went up to, uh, I went up to New York City for a weekend. And it was, it was fun. New York City is kind of a huge place, but kind of a small place. There's a lot of people walking on top of each other, and I enjoyed it because I got to go to the big comic book store that's like two floors, oh, wow. which was awesome. And I spent too much money up there because <laughs> everything is very expensive oh, in New York. Wow. Tell me about it. Like, it's the capital. Anything that's in the capital is, uses a lot of money, so yeah. Yeah, but I, I spent most of my money on comics. <laughs> it's a big comic store. Oh. I was like, I need, I need all of these back issues of Pony comic um, and back issues of, uh, I read Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, and wait, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the comic book now? Yes, they do. There are nine issues in now, I think. Oh. Um, and let's see. I got the first issue of Mockingbird, who has her own comic now. Oh. Uh, Spider Gwen. Oh, Spider Gwen uh, was a bit confusing for me. Yeah. Um, I'm not fully into it yet. I only picked up the first issue because, uh, to know, because right? I was, 
I was interested because I like her outfit. So there's got to be like a, you know, I have to read it. Uh, and and Squirrel Girl oh. I've been reading, and Squirrel Girl is hilarious. Oh, from what I, I love that one. From what I know about Squirrel Girl, she's one of the most powerful Marvel characters ever. She was like the only one to take on Thanos and win. And Doom. Like when she yeah. visited Doom in Latveria, he was like, oh, okay, hey, hey, you want to do, what do you want to do? Oh, you want to use my, oh, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, right? Like, wow. <laughs> one of the issues she puts on like an Iron Man suit and this <laughs> giant squirrel tail is hanging out of the back of the, of the Iron Man suit. And I was, oh. I was like crying laughing. I'm like, whoever made this? You are a brilliant mastermind. Oh, now I really <laughs> want to read about Squirrel Girl. Oh, wow. She's got about nine issues in, too, which, uh, which isn't bad. I mean, like, I don't know how long these arcs are supposed mm. to last, but, uh, you know, I just, I read one where, okay, she's talk, she's fighting a giant monster squirrel, and while she's fighting the giant monster squirrel, um, uh, her friend is talking to Lady Thor and, uh, Thor and Loki. And, um, Loki says, I'll be whatever you want. And she says, a cat. And so he's got the head of a cat, but he's still talking like Loki, which it was just, I was just crying. I'm like, this comic is out of control. I, I just love it, the scenario where there's Lady Thor, Thor, and, Loki and Loki and talking to Squirrel Girl's friend. Yeah, they're talking to Squirrel Girl's friend. Like, oh hey, like, what? Just talking. I'm like, where did this even come from? Well, I, I think I missed something, but I I know I have all the issues. So, but yeah, Squirrel Girl, I highly recommend. And Gem and the Holograms is a nice. Oh comic. yeah, I, I heard a lot of good things about Gem and the Hologram. I mean, I wasn't a fan of the stylistic changes of the characters at first, but then you think, and music has evolved so much, mm -hmm. you know, so I guess the style of the characters has to evolve with them. True. And, um, there's a lot of nice, nice nuances that they've added to make the story more appealing. Now the Gem and the Holograms movie oh. that's coming, I might have to disavow knowledge of, but, you know. So, okay, I, we'll I need see. to ask you, because that has been a hot topic button on this show where people do not like that movie for whatever reason, even though it's not come out yet. So, you watch the trailers, right? Yes. What do you think of it? Like, the whole story? No. No? I, I, I don't. I'm not, in a, I'm not a fan. Oh, I'm wow. not a fan of how the... Because to me, it just seems like it's another one of those, like, another one of those movies that we've seen a hundred times. Uh, um, You know, it has the power to be... So much more, because there's a lot of fantasy involved in the whole Gem and the Holograms, like, TV show. Mm, true. Like, the whole... The, uh, okay, so it's about a freaking robot that changes everybody into whatever they want, you know. And and it helps Jerrica, who, you know, wants to help these orphan children with the Starlight Foundation. It's very cliché, cliché 80, yeah. so... Yeah, I mean, at least you got something good there, like, um, punk rock is evil... <laughs> Yes. And, and, well, I mean, it really wasn't. I mean, they were both kind of rock bands in their own, mm -hmm. right? The Misfits and, and, and then you had the ultimate glam band, the Stingers, <laughs> on the, on the TV show, which was, you know, hilarious. Uh, and, you know, I can't wait to see if they try and get this in the movie. I mean, I'm still probably going to see the movie just because I want to, like, be legit mad and not just mad at the trailers. Oh, well. Uh, but, uh, you know, I... like, I want to be, Really disappointed. I don't want to just be disappointed at <laughs> so the trailer. You're, you're telling me you're willing to pay good bucks just to be disappointed at a movie. I know I'm going to be, but, you know, I'll go to the bargain theater and see it. I won't pay, like, big bucks. All right, all right. Oh, talking about disappointing movies, have you seen The Room? Tommy Wiseau's The Room. Mm -mm. Oh, wow. You, you should, really. Like, I talked to, what you want to call this, uh, Larson, Amy Larson, and he said oh, yeah. that going to a live... Uh, or a movie, a theatrical movie release where uh, Tommy Wiseau's there is just so much awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I try to stay away from the movies if I know I'm going to be disappointed, but I know this movie's going to be a train wreck, so I just need to, like... So you just have to wait and see the train wreck. I kind of almost have to, like, look at mm. it. Just to see how horrifyingly bad it is. Yeah, I, I do. Rec I do highly recommend um, Tommy Wiseau's The Room if you get a chance to watch it because it's how do I put this? It's bad that it's good. 
it's a good kind of bad. <laughs> it's so bad that it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you just love movies like that? Oh wow! Talk about like, if you want to talk about those kind of movies, just look at Hulk Hogan's movie. Oh no! What? Hulk Hogan movie? Yeah, like Santa with muscles or whatever. What else? Like I don't remember. He doesn't do much, but he has some movies. Oh yeah. Um, didn't he do like an alien movie where he was an alien? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was with back in the day. Yeah, yeah. And he was with oh god, who's the Back to the Future Doctor? Oh, I forgot his name. Oh, um, with uh, Doc Brown. Yeah. But uh, the actor. Yeah, I forgot his name. But oh wow, that's just so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those those were not good movies, but they were memorable. Man, well, it looks like we got through our news. Yeah, and well, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just enjoying chatting up with you about old movies, art, and just geeking out in general. But I think, oh yeah, oh, I, I don't want to hold you on for any for much longer than it's needed. But um, I think that's about it. Like anything else that I'm missing? Oh no, people can follow my art on Twitter. I post most of it there. Um, I don't have a Patreon or anything or whatever. I know a lot of people do mm. these days, but I, I kind of, I don't have a creative way to do a Patreon. Oh, yeah. So I just kind of stick to commission work. So a lot of it's on Twitter, Nanook1234 on Twitter. Uh, Tumblr is Animated Visions, website animatedvisions.com and DeviantArt, Nanook123 at DeviantArt. I'll link everything yes. in the show notes. I'll link everything in the show notes. And, Thank, thank you, Trish, for coming on. And you're most welcome to come on again and just nerd out. Oh, I'd love to. Yes. That's what, you know, I, when uh, Richard, I guess, reached out to me to tell me about you, I was I was like, oh, I bet you this is going to be fun. I was very honored. Thank you very much for your time. No problem. And, no problem. and for having me on your show. I just, I, it's just fun just talking to someone like who just loves the same thing and just geek out. <laughs> So anyway, um, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at mbsshow. So what we'll tweet about stuff. I don't know. We'll probably reblog um, Trisha's stuff too. And you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And currently tickling my fancy is food. I am hungry right now. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on phonyvalive.com. Links will be in the show notes. So I have been Norman Sanzo. And I've been Trish. <laughs> and we'll catch you guys next week. We have another awesome episode of the NBS show. Goodbye, y'all. Goodbye.